don't remember a time when I that God wasn't a part, you know, of my life. Growing up in a Christian home, growing up in a, a pastor's home, that was always part of who we were. I love to teach. I love to, you know, I love to watch the light come on in somebody's like, And so, yeah, just those relationships. I really like teaching high school because of the relationships that I have. And I think that has been influenced by some of the people um, who influenced me growing up. Um, they weren't necessarily, you know, teachers in school, but they were teachers kind of in life. Um, there was a couple in our church um, in Peoria who were um, just the sweetest, kindest, gentlest people. And I still think about Herb and Virginia DeBoard and how they just, the steady faith and uh, the relationship and the love that I felt from that, that I, I really hope that in my classroom I still, I can show that kind of love to other people the way they showed that kind of love to me. When I started out in school, the last thing I wanted to do was go to school to go to school. Um, I really wasn't, that's not really what I wanted to do, but the things that I was interested, English, history, there weren't a lot of options outside of that, and so that was just kind of where I went. It was just, it was just smart. That was just uh, logical. And, um, but several things happened as I started to teach, whether it was, I started teaching um, even at SNU, and I was in charge of um, a, a grammar class for um, five-day English, or I was a supplemental instructor for U.S. history, um, and those kinds of things. And so I started out kind of small, and then discovered that I really, really enjoyed it. That's really where my heart was. I tutored um, a kid from the Chicago area um, who came to SNU, had really very little solid educational background. He was very, very smart, but didn't have the grammar background, didn't come, he came from inner city um, Chicago. And I remember sitting down with him and helping him with his writing skills. He didn't know a noun from a verb and being able to go through that with him. And that was just a moment that I love this. I love being able to show somebody new information. And he loved that somebody took the time to go through that with him uh, and gave him a chance. He never had a chance. And here he was, that someone was giving him a chance and helped him through that kind of thing. And that was a moment where I felt like, this is what I was meant to do. Teaching and being a child of God or teaching that isn't separate from being a Christian for me. They are together. That is my ministry. That is what I do. I mean, being a teenager is one of the most horrible things anybody ever goes through, and we all go through it, and you couldn't pay me enough to go back to that. And I tell my kids that. I said, not to make you feel miserable, but I understand. And if I can help make some kid's life a little less miserable at 14 and 15 years old, that somebody understands and somebody cares. Because some of these kids don't have the background that I had. Parents who cared, parents that I could talk to, they don't have people that they can talk to. That there's somebody there, somebody cares, somebody's listening. And that goes right along with the things that I teach, um, I don't really even separate my subject from, um, from those things because they're all parts of teaching English, teaching history, it's part of the human experience. And so we talk about faith, we talk about those things um, because they're part of what it means to be human. And so my subject areas go right into, um, right into faith. Years ago, I had a youth pastor that in a sermon, I have never forgotten this said, treat everyone like they have an invisible sign on their forehead that said, this is God's property, leave it better than you found it. And I always seek to do that in my classroom, but I probably say that at least four times a year to different kids in different situations. And I've had several situations. I had one kid text me and ask me, what was that again? I wanna know what that is. 
what was it that you said? I had another kid write it in my yearbook. Um, and I even this year said it to a kid. He was talking about doing something, playing a prank on somebody else. I said, would you want it done to you? Just stop and think for a minute. And he says, no, I won't do it. That to me is the epitome of what I do and how I want to teach the kids um, to treat each other. And so when I see that little thing and that little saying kind of take a life of its own, that kids have taken that and made it a part of who they are, I feel like it just grows again. It was passed down to me and now I'm passing it on to somebody else and I see it um, passed along to someone else. Being a teacher, I think, is something that you have to feel like is in you. Um, I don't see it as being a plan B for anybody. Um, there are a lot of frustrating things. There are a lot of difficult things. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't trade it for anything. There are a lot of ways that you can feel like you do make a difference. There are a lot of rewarding things that if you feel like it's something that you want to do, get experience, go out there, try it, observe, find out what's out there. And if you fall in love with it and you can't see yourself doing anything else, then it's, it's for you. Um, I have kids all the time. I had one ask me, she said, Miss Chris, you're so smart. Why are you teaching high school? And I said, do you think you don't deserve a teacher who's intelligent? And she said, well, no, but I just, I, you know, you could do other things. You could do so much more. And I said, that's the whole reason I do this, that I want kids to know that they are important and that they do deserve uh, something like that. And I think, um, I think our nation could use more people who say, I don't care what anybody thinks about my position or how much money I make or how society views my profession, that this is what I was meant to do and I can't imagine myself doing anything else. I'm Dana Christofferson and I'm a member of Lake Overholzer Church of the Nazarene.